This video focuses on a schematic drawing guidelines. Um, drawing a schematic is very important. That is how we communicate um, uh, on how our designs is supposed to be um, built and uh, uh, at least from a logical point of view how things are getting connected with each other. A, couple, a handful of highlights is um, on a given page schematic has got to be the only thing on the, that page it is not something you embed in the document and just another uh, items but you got to have its own page it's got to be on landscape format in the united states typically our schematics are printed on normal u.s letter a or double the size b or double the size of b which is c size and then of course doubling to d and event doubling again to e size those are the common paper sizes used for schematic now it is most of the time we'll deliver do these schematics online anyway and they're electronically saved but once in a while we need to print them for communication and those that's what they do but as far as uh, on even in a document there needs to be in a landscape format uh, got to be the only one page on the item and it has to have two key components uh, in there it's got to have this component in the upper right corner and then this component in the lower right corner this is referred to as the component block and its purpose is to clean up your schematic where you're actually drawing the connection to the logic and capture all the items such as where the grounds are which pins are connected to VCC and which pins are not used or not connected and then also it would tell us what the component is in the case of u1 you just say 74 ls32 that's all you need to say you really don't need to describe anything else we know exactly what you're talking about and if you notice here you're going to have um, that uh, uh, u1 in there plus uh, plus you will have pin numbers uh, which usually are placed above the line right outside of the device okay so this is a very simple gate it's look like it's got two inputs and it's connected to an OR gate and output the other thing to pay attention is that the input all come from the left side of the schematic and the output Lee is placed on the right hand side you can put this on multiple pages if your schematic gets really really complicated then you could have a call out or a call in um, if something is coming from someplace as a call out you will have the name of the signal here and the call in you will have the name of the signal here so then I can use that inside my circuit so this is this is kind of the basics of what you need uh, for a schematic well, a couple other things uh, when you're doing a schematic now let's say this is a new schematic you're doing and you're going to have your component block up here you're going to have your id block over here typically if you're hand drawing these things we'll have the input come in here and the input we let's say let's say we're building an input using using these resistors and switches and then here's oops let's let's redo this give myself a little more room so okay so let's say I'm create I have an input coming in and uh, here's a switch here's the logic coming out let's say a is coming out and here's a ground what we're going to do with this one typically what we do is run down this down and then uh, we also have the inversion of that coming down so we have a and a minus available and let's say you also have another one let's say that's called B you come next to it and that would be a B and uh, so now you have the B naught and you have the D all the way down so let's say if I have an X gate which needs a B naught it's very easy and then if it needs an A you pull it out here and let's say if it needs a I don't know a 9 
now it's coming in here and pouring and the output comes out here okay so that's works and, and then remember that what we do is we put units here to one and of course these should be made big enough so the use fit fit in there um, so so that's this is this is kind of a nice structure to have uh, so you easily can pull out your outputs it inputs uh, both inverted and non-inverted if you want to do it. as you can see doing a hand drawing does it eventually ends up being somewhat messy and the fortunate thing is we have lots of tools out there and I'm going to give you three categories of tools and give you an example of each one of them so we have the, the very basic tool uh, basically what a basic tool which is a basic drawing tool designed for electrical stuff is called tiny cad is one of the simplest ones we've come across so tiny cad is good but it's in just does drawing it that's all the tool is if you want to get a little more sophisticated and eventually you're thinking maybe your uh, your design needs to be turned into pc board uh, for a more finished uh, product or maybe you want to make multiple copies of it to build multiple units then you may want to think about some tools that are meant to go to PC they are one of the one of the free tools which is really free for the basics so like up to 300 pins is called um, dip trace and that's a very nice tool and uh, we'll go take a quick look at the website and talk through it a little bit so so that would be a good one. And then of course, ORCAD, PSPICE is another good tool. The, this tool allows you to put the schematic in, but the benefit is then you can do simulations on it to see if your uh, electrical circuit or logic is right. So if you just want something to replace your hand drawing, then TinyCAD probably would do a really good job for you. If you want something then eventually can mass, not mass produce it, but have a few units build. Uh, dip trace is great because once you have the schematic there, the path to getting a PC board is very straightforward. And then finally, we've got the ORCAD uh, P Spice, and P Spice is a nice tool where you put your schematic and drawing and circuits in, and then you can run simulation a little bit inputs, and it will tell you what the output is supposed to be. So let's go take a look at some of these. Yeah, the easiest way I know how to do is. Just basically go to something like a like some some web browser. Let me grab the browser and bring it within the viewable region. And uh, so so I can I usually do a tiny CAD uh, Google just to see where it is. Here it is, and we can go download it. And it's pretty easy. Well, really a small um, small package. Um, um, you can do all kinds of drawings. It's very nice for digital logic drawing. Um, it's got lots of the symbols already in there. Um, um, uh, and, and also it looks like it says it can create a piece, something that P-Spice can read it and something that um, um, you can send to the PC board. I wouldn't recommend it, but um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good starter if you wanna do that. The other, the other ones um, is dip trace, and that one I want to don't need to do everything. It's simply dip trace does calm, and this is a relatively easy uh, schematic capture to do. It's uh, more sophisticated than TinyCAD, and then you can in turn the, and then they have all kinds of tools. They have a PC, they have a schematic capture, they have a PC layout, and then you can create libraries, and then it even has a 3D view, so you can look at what your board would look like after you're finished and printed out. So it's kind of a little nicer uh, device. It's got all kinds of tutorial, guided tours, training, all kinds of stuff there for you. And finally, we've got the ORCAD, which is a company P Spice, um, and that's that's kind of and it's, there's a free version of that as well available. And that's a, that's a great tool if you're an electrical engineer, especially, because that would allow you to, uh, once you have done it, do an analysis on it and run it through. Now this one is kind of a commercial level. The light version is not, but the real version is a commercial level um, um, product and, uh, and professionals use it all the time. 
Anyway, that kind of brings us to the end of uh, this whole conversation. A couple of pointers about um, about how schematics are done, and um, and then um, um, a few tools that you could use to lay out uh, your schematic, depending on where you want to go next with it or not.